Welcome everybody to another video from Robotic Mower Services. What I have here is a stripped down chassis from a 115H because I want to talk to you about the most common issue that people experience with the 115H which is it just not docking properly. And we have a couple of videos out there where we talk about making sure your charging station's level and uh, showing you how the mower will come in and kind of miss the, the charging station tower when it goes to back into it and what to look for there and how to check all that stuff. Um, after you do all that, if it still is consistently coming in there and just off to the side and you know off to the same side over and over again, and you just can't get the thing to work right, the next step would be to check the signal strength coming from your guide wire into the mower. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with where to check that on the mower, we'll show you here at the end. Uh, but the uh, the main thing I want to show you here is the the loop sensors that would pick up the signal from the guide wire. They also pick up, obviously, the signal from the boundary wire, but the main thing we're focused on is when the mower is backing into the charging station and it's following that guide wire into the charging station tower that you're getting a good signal. So the stripped down chassis I got here, right here, these are your charging station contacts. These, This is what makes contact with your tower. So this would be the back end of the mower here. Up here, you can see the holes here. That's where your wheel motors are at. So out here would be your front bumper. Uh, inside here, it took everything out so it's easier to tell what's what. You have your main board right here, and you have a loop sensor up here, which is real easy to see and real obvious. But the other one is actually right here in this board. And I'll show you the one up here for the front first because that's the easiest one to access. So flip this around here. Again, your main board right here, you pull off the upper chassis, and this is what you're going to see inside here. Uh, minus the wheel motors and all that stuff that I took out. But uh, anyway, the, the main board is right here. This gray cable goes into the loop sensor for the front of the mower. And to remove that, there's a black holder right here. And you just squeeze that, and it comes right up out. There's tabs on either side. When you squeeze that, they release. Pull the board right up out. You have a, uh, it's like a phone jack style connector there. Just push a little tab down, release that. That's your loop sensor for the front of the mower. Real simple to change out, real, real easy to do, real easy to find. And you can see that there's there's some wiggle room in there. It's not held in place as tightly as the ones in the uh, 300 series and 400 series mowers. So obviously, I mean, when you put the holder in there, it's a little bit better, but there is a little bit more room for it to wiggle if, it vib if the mower's vibrating and stuff than on the other models. Shouldn't be too much of an issue though. Because the sensor itself down at the bottom, I mean, it's not going to be flopping all over the place. So I wouldn't get too concerned about that. Biggest thing is, what is the signal value coming in from the, the wire through this board and into your, your mower's display? Now, we'll go around here to the other one in the back. That is right here where you got these two plugs right here. This plug is actually the one that comes from your battery. If you flip the mower over, this is right where your your battery compartment's at, and you can see this is the plug here that the battery actually plugs into. That is the bottom of this board that we're talking about right here. So to remove this, you actually have to take out these two screws out here in front of these two joysticks. Take these two screws out, and then you'll see on the side of your chassis, there's little nubs right here, and there's one on the other side. And when you take these two screws out, you're gonna push in this little tab right there, and this whole part will pivot down on those nubs, and you will have this right here. This is what comes out. See, there's the little nubs I'm talking about. That's the tab right there that releases it in the front. And then this board here, uh, there's two screws in there. There's a supposed to be a clip at the back. This one busted off. And you have the clip at the front, which you can see here on this one, it's whole. Um, but that's how you take this out. You take two screws out, you'll pry out on this up front here, and then you'll have your clip at the back, you'll push back on, and this is the whole unit right there. It gets replaced just like that. So obviously to replace it, just to reverse the process, you put the new one in, you clip it into place in the front, clip it in the front, or uh, into place in the back, put your screws in, slide into the chassis, flip it up, it'll latch in with that tab right there, put your screws in, and uh, connect your wires, and that's it. 
So that's where your two loop sensors are at for your 115H auto mower. Obviously they are in right in the center of the mower because it's going to follow right on top of that guide wire when it goes to dock itself into the charging station. It's going to line up with this one right here because this is the back. Remember, this is where your contacts are at and it's going to, it's going to come into that charging station tower just like that right there. So this is going to be the main one that you're going to want to focus on. This one up here, obviously, like I said, it's the easier one to get to and everything. Um, when you go in there to check the signal quality, you're going to see both of them at the same time. So, you know, it's not like you're going to be picking at one and not the other. So check them both out and um, see what you got going on there as far as what your, your signal value is coming in from your guide wire. Now, we'll go back to where you find that on the mower. Give me a second here. I'll get my 115H over here and power it on, and I'll show you how to go to the menu and access that information again. All right, we've got the 115H up here on the bench, powered up and ready to go. It's on this home screen right here. Now, we want to get into the quick info menu so we can see what our signal values are coming in from our boundary wire, guide wire, and all that stuff. Uh, our charging station, when we have the mower in the charging station. To get a better idea of what the mower is sensing and why it's going the way it's going. So the way to access that quick info menu is right here, the menu button. Instead of hitting it just once, you actually hold it down. And there we go, quick info. And you'll see info, history, advanced. We want info. We're going to leave that highlighted, hit OK. Now we got general, we got battery, we got loop, and we got sensors. We want loop. So we're going to go down, highlight loop, hit OK. Now, here we have our A loop, which is our boundary wire. I have a small little boundary wire around this thing, not very much. And you can see that it didn't take much to, to get that to just go all wonky there. But the big thing here is we have our, you can see A signal front, A signal rear. The front is where your Husqvarna logo is at, and the rear is at the back where your stop button is at and your port for your, your uh, charging station to plug into. Here we got 181 and we got 191. That's not terrible. It's within 10. So we know that both of our loop signal sensors are pretty much working uh, the way they should because one's not at like 75 and the other one's at 90. Um, you know, because they're going to be pretty close to each other because the mower is only so long and can only get so far away from the same wire that it's trying to sense. Now, we want to check the guide wire though because that's what the mower is going to follow into the charging station. So up here where A loop is highlighted, we just want to push the over arrow and go to G comma F. We want guide and we want, so here we have, we have FC and we have RC, front and rear. And G1, that's the one we want to look at. And you can see here under front, we have 102, 101 for our signal value. But the rear, we have negative 65 for guide one. Now, I was just saying about how the loop sensors will give pretty close to the same reading. And if they're way off, then you've probably got a problem with one of your sensors. Don't be fooled by that when it comes to the guide wire because the reason why we're getting 100, 101, 102, something like that here for the front, and we're getting a negative one for the rear is because I have this plugged into the charging station. So you want to make sure that you're testing this in a proper way. If I remove the charging station tower from the mower, that negative 63 there for the rear loop sensor, that's gonna go back up. So we'll pull that out here, and there we go. See how it went from, from negative up to 98 now. So now we got 98 and 103, so our loop sensors are working okay. Again, they're very close to reading the same thing. You might be saying, well, what about here, the negative 237 to the 136? Well, it's sensing the the antenna wire in the charging station tower. And that's why this went negative right there for the rear sensor, because when I plug that in, the mower is actually over top of that, that signal wire, uh, that antenna wire. And that's why the guide wire goes negative because it's not picking up the guide wire anymore because it's being overpowered by that antenna wire in the charging station. I'll show you again here when I plug the charging station tower in. See, there we go. We jump to negative numbers, and this went even more negative there. The farther the way, the further away the mower gets from the charging station tower, this will come up to be positive, uh, and will be closer to what the front loop sensor is saying. Because uh, again, you know, it's going to be away from sensing that signal in the charging station tower. So, but that's where you 
that's where you'll go in to check your signal values. Uh, one more over here, got quality. Obviously, we want to look for for 100 there, and we have 100. And it's telling us it's in the charging station. If I remove this, that should go away. There we go. In the charging station, nope. And we're back in the charging station. So that's it right there. That's how you find that information. Um, that's a good way to check out your your um, loop sensors to make sure that they're actually getting a good signal value from the guide wire to make sure it's nothing with the, the sensors themselves. And it's more something to do with the alignment of your charging station tower, um, your, your guide wire alignment or something to, to that effect that's causing your mower to have the issues with docking. Um, one more thing I'll show you here if I remove this from the charging station and uh, I just wiggle the, the guide wire around underneath here. I mean, it makes a, it makes a big difference in how far these numbers drop just by moving that around a little bit under the mower uh, when it gets out of line just a little bit from those sensors. And every little bit counts because this thing has to be pretty dead on when it's backing in there uh, in order to be able to line up right. There you can see we got 68 on the front one, 67. That's getting down to where it's almost at the minimum of what it should be sensing. There's 46. So just a little idea of uh, something you can check. Uh, real simple to do. You don't have to call the dealer for that one. You know, um, go out there to your mower, go in the menu just like I showed you, check those values out, play around your guide wire a little bit, make sure everything's working properly. So, um, that's going to do it here for this video. As always, if you're looking for parts for your auto mower, you're looking to buy an auto mower, you need some more technical support for your auto mower, the place to start is our website, www.roboticmowerservices.com. If you can't find what you're looking for there on our website, shoot us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, and thanks for watching.